Hello, Richard here at Calvin Wazoo with another video in my series, Frank Zappa, one album at a time. And today we're talking about shut up and play your guitar. All right. Um, there are three records in here. They were all released initially separately in May of 1981. What I have is uh, the box set, which uh, was released in 1982. I also have the set uh, that was released, and uh, this is the one from 1995 by Ryko Disc, the triple CD. There was also a double CD that was released in 1986. Uh, the triple CD, which is the one that I have, 1995, and then the double CD that was released in 2012. Unlike with some earlier releases that had some differences between what was on vinyl and, and what was on CD, um, all the tracks are the same regardless of what CD you bought, um, and also the with the uh, box set. But like I said, it was originally released, they were originally released individually, and it was a mail order thing. You had to, you know, sign in, there was a uh, mail order that you could find in Tinseltown Rebellion, and also You Are What You Is, that then you could order the, the three different albums. Uh, which were Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar Some More, and then The Return of the Son of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. Um, some other curious, little curious things about it. Every single version, in some manner or another, misspells Warren Cucurullo's name. And... They, but the thing is, too, that they misspell it differently each time. <laughs> so, um, an interest, you know, just as a matter of point, you know, Warren Cucurullo was a founding member of Missing Persons. He was also a longtime member of the band Duran Duran. This is the first time, I believe, when Frank released something that was strictly guitar solos or more solo oriented, the majority of tunes on this release are guitar solos from uh, live performances of other you know, songs. And a couple, however, are really standalone pieces that are either very guitar-centric or they are guitar solos. It's really kind of a, not just a new thing for Frank, it really was kind of a new thing in general. Frank was always, um, always felt like there weren't enough good guitar solos in popular music, particularly back when he was forming the Mothers of Invention. He just really didn't think pop music and rock and roll uh, was really showcasing the guitar that well in terms of solos. And so he really did make this, uh, this part of his music in a very, very integral way. In fact, there are songs that are written around a guitar solo he would come up with the guitar solo first and then write a song around it so that uh, that would showcase that particular guitar solo. Um, City of Tiny Lights is a, a great example of that. A song that began as a guitar solo and then he crafted the, the rest of it to go around it. So yeah, he came out with this idea that was really kind of unique with Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, and then he released some others, um, or I should say the estate did, such as, you know, Transfusion, um, Dub Room Special, which I knew I had a copy of Dub Room Special, but for some reason I can't find it. Really annoys me. 
but it was a very different thing that he did. And, you know, as it says on the uh, backside of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, you know, until the release of this album, only a few people realized what the hardcore Zappa fanatics had know all, known all along, that FZ can play the guitar, you know, and he can and did. And his skill at the guitar is, is really quite exceptional. And his technique in playing is instantly recognizable. So different from anyone else in the way he used the instrument and incorporated guitar solos in a way that they did, they became pieces unto themselves. And that's really what we kind of get with some of these solos, uh, because some of them are standalone pieces, and then others are guitar solos from particular songs. Now, on this recording, too, he has four different guitars. Plus, he is playing another instrument on uh, one of the, uh, the closing songs. Uh, but one of the guitars is this handmade copy of a Gibson SG. And he bought it in 1974 off of somebody after a Phoenix show. This guy, Bart Nagel, brought it to Frank's dressing room. And he had basically built a copy of the Gibson SG, but he added one more fret so that it went up to E. And then he did an ebony fingerboard with it. He had, he put in humbucking pickups, uh, and he had some really nice inlay and uh, woodwork, and Frank really liked it, and he bought it off of uh, uh, Bart Nagel. And then he had some other modifications done to it and uh, used this Gibson, this Gibson SG copy uh, quite a bit. Then another guitar he uses on some of the solos here is a Gibson Les Paul with the Marcio pickups. And he also plays on a few, uh, a Fender Stratocaster, also with the Marcio pickups. And then there are two studio jams in which he is playing an acoustic Black Widow. Now, that doesn't mean he's playing an acoustic guitar. It's acoustic brand. So this is an electric guitar that was designed by Acoustic Control Corporation, which is better known for amplifiers. So... Um, that is pointed out in uh, the fabulous resource, The Big Note. So those are the guitars. So let's get into the songs. I thought about doing a separate video for each of the three records, but I have decided to go with just this one video. Let's go through it, all right? So the first record, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. Opening track 555, five, which is five low, all lowercase, five lowercase, and then five all caps. This is a solo from the song Conehead uh, that was performed in London in 1979, and Frank is using that SG uh, to play. This solo has a lot of space to it. Um, now, and also Conehead, this is an example of where the solo came first, and then the song Conehead was built around it. Uh, but you see this, well, Conehead wasn't released until uh, much later, and now I'm relying on memory here, but I think it's from You Are What You Is, perhaps. Uh, you know, and we're, we're talking, you know, 1980, 81, I think, somewhere around there. Um, the solo actually existed since 1975, and at times he would play it, uh, inserted into the when he would do Chunga's Revenge. So as I said, this solo has a lot of space, just really, really nice, broad solo. And you know Frank would transcribe his solos after he played them. I mean the solo would come to him. When, when he would first develop a solo, and then he would play it, and then after that, he would go back and transcribe it. So many of these solos, when they were initially played or he created them for the first time, they were spontaneous. They were things that he was playing, 
you know, and he recorded it while he was playing, and then, you know, he transcribed it afterwards. And um, this particular one, 555, uh, is like that. The next song is called Hog Heaven, and it comes from a Tulsa, Oklahoma show from October of 1980, and this one's on the Les Paul, and it's a solo from Easy Meat. And this begins really grinding. It has this, this industrial feel to his playing. It's just really coarse and, you know, perhaps even aggressive, but then the solo turns really bright and fast, um, really, really nice, fine solo. Then the titular solo, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar, is uh, from London, 1979, and uh, Zappa is playing on the SG. And the solo comes from Inca Rhodes. So this is Inca Rhodes, the solos in Inca Rhodes um, sort of develop together, all right? Because this is a case in which the solo was developed as part of how Inca Rhodes came to develop. Inca Rhodes was not written around a solo, so to speak. The whole thing kind of developed, you know, together. Um, so there were the two ways that, you know, Frank would develop his solos. Um, this is among the four best solos that are on this recording, uh, in my opinion. And I tell you, uh, listening to this also, Vinny uh, Kaliuta is just a menace on the drums. It is just amazing to listening to his drumming. Then we go into the song, While You Were Out. And this is one of the studio recordings that was done on the Black Widow. And it was recorded about the spring of 1979, specific date, you know, unknown. But it was recorded in one take, all right? And it has this very sublime and delicate and jazzy feel. And you can, you know, you can hear the very distinct sound of the Black Widow. Uh, again, the drums are just amazing. Vinny is just playing beyond himself. It is just totally incredible. Uh, really, really nice song. This is followed by Treacherous Cretins. And this is from a London show in 1979, and it's been, uh, it was played on the SG. This is another amazing and soaring solo that's got some really cool dissonance going on, and it's played on top of a reggae vamp. It's kind of, um, considering it's 1979, it's kind of a shake-your-booty style of playing that's going on here. And then uh, Warren Cucurullo is playing electric sitar as well, uh, during this. Um, very good solo, uh, but I tell you, then the next one, Heavy Duty Judy. This is from a 1980 Berkeley show, and uh, Zappa's playing the Les Paul. This is definitely heavy and rocking. And the interesting thing about this is that both the drums, uh, and, which is Vinny, and then Frank are just going apeshit. That's how he describes it. They're going apeshit. While the rhythm section is playing this same basic shuffle rhythm, all right? So there's always somebody playing on the downbeat for the drummer and for Frank. So the two of them just go wild. They're staying in the, um, you know, they're staying within the rhythm, but they don't have to worry about the downbeat because the other rhythm section, the bass, and, you know, and the other rhythm instruments are, are playing that. So someone's always playing the downbeat for them. Really uh, amazing piece put together. This is then followed by Soup and Old Clothes. And this is a solo from the uh, Illinois Enema Bandit that came from a Santa Monica show, December 11th of 1980. Frank, <clears throat> excuse me, Frank is playing the Les Paul. Um, there's definitely a very smooth beat, smooth rhythm uh, underneath Frank's frenetic fingers. And uh, Arthur Barrow puts this really funky bass line in there. And uh, Frank is just, uh, my notes say, Frank puts the stank on. He does. If this guitar solo, he puts the stank on it. And it's just really, really good. That's the, that's the closer for the first album. 
All right, the second album, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar Some More. This opens with variations on the Carlos Santana secret chord progression. Uh, and this is from a show in Santa Monica on December 11th, 1980. Uh, not Dallas, which is what it says in the booklet, okay, that uh, uh, the booklet that came, you know, with the CDs or whatever. So that was, uh, that was an error. It's a Santa Monica show. And this is a solo from the City of Tiny Lights, and Frank's playing it on, a on the Les Paul. City of Tiny Lights, is, as I said earlier, is one of those songs that began as a solo, and then Frank wrote the rest of it uh, to, to uh, you know, around that solo. And you can hear it, too, how the song is sort of like, you know, has one sound and feel to it, and then the solo goes, you know, into this entirely different direction. As the title suggests, there there is sort of this um, Santana feel to it, but the secret chord progression is really just something someone made up. It was one of Arthur Barrow's college chums, you know, made it up, the secret chord progression, which F Frank, you know, liked that idea and, and then used it uh, for that. We get uh, next the song that's titled G, or I should say the solo that's called G, I Like Your Pants. And this is from a London Late Show in February of 1979. This is from Inca Rhodes, uh, and it's on the SG. And this is also a time where Frank is using this Hungarian bagpipe technique, which is he's tapping on the strings with both hands, not picking. Um, or actually, I think he's uh, using the, the side of the pick, tapping on, on the strings, you know, on the neck. That's what he calls the Hungarian bagpipe technique. Really, really good, uh, really good solo. Um, up comes Canarsi. All right, this is from a London show in February of 1979 uh, with some studio overdubs. And Frank is playing the SG. And according to um, the big note, the solo is coming either from Easy Meat or Pound for Brown. Regardless, th this is probably the weakest track uh, on the series, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's okay, but it's just not that big. But the next song, the next song, Ship Ahoy, best solo in, on the entire three album set. I will say also it's one of Frank's top five solos. I mean, a lot of people say Watermelon and Easter Hay is his best solo, and it is truly a magnificent and beautiful solo. But I kind of like Ship Ahoy better. Um, this is from an Osaka, Japan show from uh, February 1976. And this is the one of or the earliest live tracks on this. And uh, Frank is playing a Stratocaster through an Oberheim voltage controlled filter set to sample and hold. It's got a really, really amazing sound uh, when he's playing. And it's from the coda to the song Zoot Allures. There's that funky finger tapping that's going on. There's lots of stank. Lots of stank in the solo. Uh, I really, really dig the groove. I mean, ship ahoy. It, that's a great solo. Followed by Deathless Horsey. Uh, this is a standalone solo, all right? So Deathless Horsey is, that's the song, the solo. It's uh, from a London recording in February of 1979. And this was the opening guitar solo for the show February 19th. Frank plays on the SG. It's got kind of a Wagnerian feel to it, kind of big and grandiose and a little bit kind of orchestral in its sound, but it's on top of a reggae beat. Uh, really, really interesting performance. Uh, then we have the titular solo for this particular, uh, for the second record, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar Some More. Uh, this is another Inca Rhodes solo that's played on the SG from the early show in London on February 18th, 1979. Vinnie 
on the drums again. He's just crazy. He's going ape shit. And Ed Mann helping out on other percussion is the, the two of them together. You know, I at times I find myself listening to the percussion uh, as opposed to the solo because it's just so amazing. This is followed by Pink Napkins, which is the solo from Black Napkins. Uh, this was performed in London, February of 1977. And Frank is playing on the Stratocaster through a harmonizer. And this is dark and moody. That's, those are my notes from that. It's dark and moody. Uh, it's, uh, it's really quite good. Um, and that's the closer for the second LP. So we come to the third one, The Return of the Son of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. This opens with Beat It With Your Fist. And this is from the uh, October 30th, 1980 New York show. So this was, you know, part of his stint when he was doing a lot of uh, Halloween shows. Uh, of course, Halloween being the next night. But anyway, it's a solo from The Torture Never Stops, and he's playing the Les Paul with this one. It's sassy. This is a sassy solo and rhythmically complex. And again, lots of stank. This, this is just the way to, to say it about these solos. There's lots of stank on it. Uh, really good. Then we have the titular song for the record, The Return of the Sun of Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. This is from a London show, February 19th, 1979. This is, again, Inca Rhodes uh, on the SG. This is the best Inca Rhodes solo by far. It, it delivers this vast harmonic range. And then, but Frank will make the guitar growl at times. I mean, it's like an animal. It sounds like an animal. Not a machine-like growl like he might do on some of the earlier tracks. But this is a very animalistic growl that he gets out of that guitar. And then he gets really de delicious distortion while he's playing. He's doing that bagpipe sound again uh, with it. And, and drums, my notes just say drums, exclamation point. Again, it's Vinny with Ed Mann on the other percussion instruments. Uh, they provide this backdrop to the solo that is just as incredible and as amazing as a solo. You get six minutes into the song. It's like a nine minute song. And you get six minutes in and there's a key change. And then both the drums, Vinny and, and Frank start playing outside the beat, you know? And then Frank sort of bends the sound. That's the best way I can describe it. He bends the sound back into the original key and rhythm structure. Just, this is amazing. Uh, next song, Pinocchio's Furniture. This is from an early show in Berkeley, uh, December 5th, 1980. And it's the Chunga's Revenge solo on the Les Paul. Um, my note says caterwauling. And I don't mean that in a negative way. But really, it kind of reminded me of a sassy alley cat, you know, talking and while like filing his talons. So yeah, Pinocchio's furniture, uh, caterwauling. Uh, the next one is Why Johnny Can't Read. This is from London. Uh, February 17th, 1979. It's a solo from Pound for a Brown, and it's performed on the SG. And the title refers to a 1955 best-selling book uh, that was te uh, uh, described, you know, teaching phonics for reading. So a lot of rever reverb and echo going on with this particular solo. Uh, but there's like three minutes in, Frank just goes into like hair-raising hair-raising speed. It's just incredible how fast he is playing the notes, you know, and then, you know, he settles back in. Uh, really, really quite amazing solo. And then uh, that's followed by Stucco Holmes. 
Uh, this is this is a really interesting song, and is uh, among my favorite tracks. It's a studio recording from the spring of 1979, when we have Frank and Warren Cucurullo uh, both playing guitars over this pre-recorded drum track that was made by Vinnie Cayuta, and Frank is playing the acoustic Black Widow. The percussion is amazing. Vinnie, again, is just really playing beyond himself. Just the drumming is phenomenal. And the the song itself has this kind of like a feel from like Burt Weenie Sandwich, a little bit similar uh, to what was going on at that time, mostly with Burt Weenie Sandwich, maybe a little Uncle Meatish. Uh, but it also has this very John McLaughlin like feel in the playing style. Just, you know, really, really amazing stuff. Four minutes into the song, it then it also becomes really soothing, very atmospheric, lush and gorgeous. The guitar just it 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 just almost caresses your entire body. The sound, and then we get to uh, the closer, uh, Kennard de Jour, and this is the earliest track, a studio track that was recorded at Paramount Studios in July of 1972. And there's only two instruments. Frank is playing a bozoki, which is a, I think I pronounced it right, bozoki. It's a Greek fretted instrument with four pairs of strings that are tuned C, F, A, D. And then Jean-Luc Ponty plays a baritone violin. It has a very orchestral, an Americana feel. Um, and then at about six minutes, six minutes, 10 seconds in, it gets this folky bluegrass style. Um, I say bluegrass, but it, you know, it's not like bluegrass, but it's got that folky, very mountain music kind of style and feel to it. It's like the music is galloping across the hills. There's huge, Space, like you're, there's plains and mountains and rivers. It's a very, very pastoral feel to this, and you know, so it's more of a more of a song into itself as opposed to being a solo, even though it's included in this you know collection of guitar solos, because it really is a play between a Frank playing this this uh, bazooka. bazooka and uh, Jean Luc Ponty on the baritone violin. It is my one of my favorite tracks on here. I mean, behind Ship Ahoy, I would say this is my next favorite track. Uh, Frank has said about this, quote, it sounded like chamber music. It sounded like it was all written out, except we just did it in one take, straight through. It was real good. Yeah, and real good it was. So, a very different type of Frank Zappa album. Just him playing guitar for the most part. And phenomenal solos. Uh, there was maybe one weak one in here, but for a three-record set, this is some really incredible uh, playing going on here. And just, and it's just, you know, put together so well. There's, there's thought um, and the variation, I mean, three of them are based on Inca roads, you know, but there is still, and you can recognize as soon as he starts playing, the shut up, play your guitar, shut up and play your guitar some more, and the return of the son of shut up and play your guitar, you can recognize that they are solos from Inca roads, you know, pretty readily. But nonetheless, they're, while adhering to the theme of the piece, they are unique in, in, in how they present that theme and really quite exceptional. So, um, hey, if you really dig Frank's guitar playing, but sometimes you have issues with his uh, lyrical content um, or even with some of the other music that he, musical content that he sometimes puts together, you know, 
think about, you know, when you see this, you know, uh, either the CD um, or the uh, 3LP box set, you know, consider it. If you love guitars and if you're a guitar player yourself and really appreciate fine guitar music, this is an uh, this is an album to have. So uh, don't forget to check me out on Instagram where I go by the handle newsdude76. That's N E W Z D U D E seven six. And you know, leave a comment in the down under. You know, what are your favorite Frank Zappa guitar solos? Not necessarily uh, coming from this, but any guitar solo that you can think of or even from a live show that you attended, if you remember a particular solo. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, he's an amazing, was an amazing uh, guitar player for sure. There's just no way you, you can say that he's not one of the top five, in my opinion. I know Rolling Stone ranks him, like, in the top 25, Somewhere, I can't remember if it's around 20 or something like that, but to me, he's he's top five. Frank Zappa's top five when it comes to the guitar. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And always remember to pray for the people inside your head, for they won't be there when you're dead.